cosmic rays, which are produced by supernovae and violent processes throughout the galaxy. They produce high energy uh, protons, which collide with the atmosphere and then turn into neutrons. Most of them are filtered by the atmosphere or deflected from the Earth by the magnetic field. A tiny amount of them reach the surface of the Earth. And they continue to interact with the rocks and soils on the surface of the Earth. So when such a high energy neutron produced by a supernova somewhere hits silicon, oxygen, magnesium, iron, whatever that you element that you find in, in the rocks on the surface, those elements are going to explode. It's called spallation. And they will produce other elements. Most of these elements are either going to be very common in the Earth or they're going to be very short-lived, very radioactive. There's a few of them that are um, scientifically interesting, such as beryllium-10. Beryllium-10 has a half-life of 1.3 million years. The age of the Earth is 4.5 billion years. So at first sight, there shouldn't, there's no reason why there should be any beryllium-10 on Earth. The only way that we can explain the existence of beryllium-10 on the Earth is due to these cosmic rays. And the beryllium-10 is only contained in the uppermost one or two meters below the surface. Below that, there is no beryllium-10 because the cosmic rays don't reach that deep. So if you measure the concentration of beryllium-10 in sand, in quartz, you can uh, calculate how long that quartz has been exposed to cosmic rays. It's like estimating how long a person has been lying in the sun by looking at the, the tan or at the redness of their skin in the case of my skin. Uh, so that's cosmogenic nuclei dating. Now, suppose that in, uh, you have a river catchment. The whole river catchment is being irradiated by cosmic rays. The uppermost one or two meters contain beryllium-10, but also another cosmogenic nucleoid, aluminium-26. Um, that landscape is eroding. The sand in the rivers draining that landscape will also contain a small amount of beryllium-10, aluminium-26. That's carried down the river and then enters a desert, such as the Namib Sand Sea. Now then, the sand will get buried in these sand dunes. And in the Namib Sand Sea, the dunes are up to 100 meters high. They'll be buried, they'll be shielded from cosmic rays. Beryllium-10 production will stop. Radioactive decay of the beryllium-10 will continue. So as the sand moves from the south to the north across the sand sea, beryllium-10, aluminium-26 are going to decrease in concentration. The difference between the cosmogenic nuclear concentration in the north of the Namib sand sea and the south tells us how long the sand has been buried in the sand sea. And it turns out, quite surprisingly, that that's at least a million years. We know that the Namib sand sea has been there for a long time because climatically it's a very stable, dry conditions there. But we didn't know that the sand itself was that old because there have been sea level changes and there's been glaciations and, and, and all kinds of things happening. The sand has been sitting there for a very long time.